One man's difficult decision almost cost him his life. Well, yeah. You know, I had I tried to kill myself. You know, I, I had tried to kill myself. What did you do? I, I actually, I, I took a lot of pills. I probably took about like 70 pills. 70 pills? Yeah. He's too afraid to tell his family and friends. But tonight, he shares his story and struggle with us and explains he's not the only one. Religion is almost always a controversial topic. Oh, yes, it is. And for this local man, it's so controversial, he's afraid it could cost him everything. Our Evrod Kasemi spoke with him and explains why. This story isn't as much about what Jehovah's Witnesses believe as it is about what some experience when they leave the religious organization. Bouts of depression, losing communication with loved ones, and even thoughts of suicide. It's just what some have experienced. But there is hope. I'm scared of doing this interview too because if you know if it's, if somebody recognizes me, uh, then you know I, I could be disfellowship. Casey was raised a Jehovah's Witness. He asked us to hide his identity because he's scared to leave and lose his family and Jehovah's Witness friends. How do you know that your own parents would not talk to you anymore? Well, because I, I have uh, other family that are disfellowshipped and they don't talk to them. We contacted the Jehovah's Witness headquarters by phone and email to confirm Casey's fears. We received a written statement that said we respectfully decline participation. However, you're welcome to visit our official website for information on Jehovah's Witnesses. There, a section on the subject of disfellowshipping reads in part, a baptized witness who makes a practice of breaking the Bible's moral code and does not repent, he or she will be shunned or disfellowshipped. Father John Saliba of U of D Mercy is an expert on world religions, including the Jehovah's Witness organization. He explains why leaving can be so difficult for some. You're living in an environment which is very, very secure. Mm -hmm. And now all of a sudden you leave and you find yourself in an environment which is not secure at all. It was hard in the beginning, losing all my friends and losing my family. Terrell Anglin left this Jehovah's Witness Kingdom Hall a year and a half ago. He claims that leaving the organization and being shunned took a toll on his mental health. I was all alone because as Jehovah's Witnesses, they tell you not to hang with people that's not part of the organization. So I had no friends here and then I lost all my Jehovah's Witness friends. So now I'm in the world all by myself. Terrell's marriage even suffered, ending in divorce just weeks ago. With his wife still following the Jehovah's Witness faith, he claims they're not even allowed to be in contact. If I see you out at a grocery market, a restaurant, wherever the case may be, if we've been knowing each other, you're not allowed to say anything to me. There are lots of small groups like that. I would mention first Scientology. Then there are some small, even Catholic groups for Terrell, losing all the relationships he had ever known led to bouts of depression, similar to Casey's situation. Instead of attempting suicide, though, he turned to the internet in search of therapy. It was just what he needed. It made me feel relieved. You know, there was people out there that went through the same things I went through. Casey is in a much better place now and is planning to leave the organization in the next six months. Uh, any message that you would have for your wife? I always had love for you. Uh, I think you're a great woman, you're smart. I'm sorry. And Father John Saliba adds that not everyone goes through similar mental health problems when leaving the Jehovah's Witness organization, but adds that many of the stories that he's heard all sound the same. If you're facing a similar choice in any life decision, you're encouraged to get help. Evrod Kasemi, Local 4.